There are a few benefits to consider when deciding whether to conduct some web-based attacks. I think the biggest one is that an attacker can attack from anywhere in the world. A web-based attack works equally well from across the city, across the street, within a network in fact, and across the world. So that level of abstraction allows an attacker to oftentimes remain undetected, certainly unidentified, and not arrested or thrown in jail for what they're doing for these kinds of attacks. As an ethical hacker, it helps because it proves the point of not knowing who an attacker is. When a company finds an intrusion and wants to trace it back, it's really, really, really difficult to do. And this type of attack, web-based attacks, hits that point home by showing that even if it's coming from inside the network or really close by, it doesn't matter. It's super easy to cover tracks. Another key point is that an attacker can build one set of skills and use it against a multitude of servers, a multitude of organizations, companies, platforms, and so forth, because these skills are very easily transferable. They're not unique to a specific version of an operating system with a specific patch level and a specific type of exploit. Web-based attacks are just really, really good universal skills. So a lot of attackers do understand this space very well and are able to attack in this space really easily. It also scales well, considering the fact that this attack approach can be very universal. It means that this attacker can attack hundreds of servers, thousands of servers, instead of one server or two servers. Footprinting is certainly still an important aspect. Footprinting the systems to ensure that the attacker knows what operating system they're running, what version of the internet server they're running, and so forth is critical, sure. But an attacker can attempt a thousand different attacks at the same time against a thousand different servers if they understand some core web-based attacks and know how to scale them out so that they can try them that fast. The other aspect to remember here is that there's only so many web server types. The attacker builds their skills based on usually the most prevalent web servers at the time, and I'll show you which ones they are in just a moment. An attacker that has any kind of skill at compromising those primarily used web servers is going to find a lot of success out there. There are any number of web-based vulnerabilities out there. We're going to examine several during this video, but there are other videos in the Certified Ethical Hacker series that actually explore these in a lot more depth. For example, there's an entire video on SQL injection attacks out there that you can take a look at. But this point here on this slide is just to show that there are not just one or two types of attacks. A lot of folks think, well, there's just attacks against web clients, installing an extra toolbar or a browser add-on, something like that. That's really the only type of attack. That's actually not true at all. There's a number of web-based vulnerabilities, server-side, client-side, and both, server and client-side combinations that can be exploited by an ethical hacker. You're going to see an awful lot of those in this video, but you will see them across the rest of the videos as well. And I mentioned that there's a fairly limited set of web servers out there, and that's a little bit of a misnomer in that there's primarily two web servers out there, Microsoft's Internet Information Service, which comes on Windows Server, and Apache, which typically comes on Linux. And those two combined account for more than 75% of all existing web servers at, the, at this time. That doesn't mean that there's only one or two more. There actually are quite a number of different web platforms out there. But there's two primary web platforms in broad use today. So as an attacker, these are the two that you want to concentrate on understanding a little bit more, understanding the vulnerability space for, and how to exploit them. IIS and Apache are both nice for an attacker in that you can run them in virtual machines, you can download them, uh, reconfigure them, play with them, and actually do practice attacks against them. And they're not unachievable. They don't run on giant platforms that cost trillions of dollars. They don't run in unique scenarios. These are pretty much commodity platforms.